So this is a separate little piece of video just showing the actual movement and I have all the lads here to do it. So uh, go for it there guys. This is uh, the second time it's been lowered so far. So that's the lighting stand that we're using to prop it. And it's that simple. It just absolutely runs. Climb on it guys. Two, three, four, three. Go on there. All hanging off it. So currently uh, it's not even beefed up and it's that strong, I've been sitting on it and it's literally only welded in three little places above. Try and shake it guys, shake it side to side. There's absolutely so little movement in it that I will sort out. And you can see how the junction works. So do you want to close it guys? So this little piece here just needs to be pulled in and it'll be pulled into that. Whereas the other side, when I get around it, lines up much closer. An absolute total success, I have to say. And so we've put the bolts in, which are the limits uh, that actually stops it and when it actually comes back down it's completely level and uh, the hydraulics will more than manage it the hydraulic rams are rated at a ton and two of us can lift this with absolutely no effort so that's it i'm about to run out of battery on this thing so happy so in order to strengthen up the inside parts between the hinge and say the outside of the radar arch i've managed to uh, cut these little bits of cardboard and basically there are three per side you can see them L1 to 3 and R1 to 3 and basically I've just cut these out roughly in 50mm uh, by 5 or 6 to 6 mil, uh steel and they're going to go in and strengthen the outer side of the radar arch to the actual hinge plate that's on the radar arch side now not on the, the boat side so the other thing I have done is I've reprinted what you would have seen, the, the diagram to cut the, the radius. And I've bent uh, quite well. I'm going to have to cut these down, but they're absolutely perfect on the line the whole way around, you can see. And they're going to play it along on the inside, just inside 
so that will give a little just bit of a thickness and stiffness and uh, that's uh, 25 by 5 and I, I bent these on this little jig I made here made this last year for other work and uh, basically you just bend it by hand it's not, nothing rocket science here but um, we can take most thicknesses of the bar there for, for pressing against if I need to, to open it back up and uh, they, this is an exact copy I have this one done already just to sit one on top of the other and they're absolutely bang on so you can see how accurate they are and the last little thing I need to do is this is to follow up on the uh, outside part of the back of the hinge along just before the ram connects in and basically I'm just going to use this it's only 50 by 4 it's plenty and uh, the little line there you can see it I'm just going to cut that with a grinder and then I'll have two pieces that as I use I can use whichever part but I want their taper so I can cut them and mark them so these are just little templates just to get the angles right so I'm going to cut those and then I will have basically all the pieces I need to stiffen up the the radar arch to the uh, hinge so another part uh, that's coming together is uh, this and it's, uh, it's one inch box nothing high tech about that and this is one and a quarter that we filed out all the inside the little weld line and the rib inside and it fits exactly snugly that and that and I'll weld this here I'll put a pin mechanism here to hold it in place and I'll cut this to height then when I need and I'll just use another piece of one inch to a handle and that would be my emergency tiller arm we paint this bright red and bury it into the area where the back of the rudder clip it in there somewhere and have it there so that if it ever needed it, it's it's fast found and easy to identify in case we do actually need it in a hurry so no point in having it stored away miles away from the, where we'll actually need it so that's another little job done bit by bit we're knocking away all the little jobs so excuse the wind that's have been working flat out for a few days friends the wind is quite bad now so it's going to be noisy Let's see what has happened in two or three days bolt is back to bare metal and it's good enough I feel that we won't we we'll just sand it it won't need extra blasting this was all blasted back in 2010 so the windows are starting to get done we take out the windows and finish it off but the fly bridge is all done. There'll be some filling, uh, but we treat it then like once we have the primer on, the first primer on, then we do all the fills and cuts from there. And there's our lovely joint, the red arch. So I think at any given time there's been three or four angle grinders running here with mops, and they're flying through. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, I've taken a few days off for some much needed R&R &R with myself. So I'm back today. Uh, it's been raining hard since last Saturday, which was yesterday. Today, Sunday, and uh, most of the uh, superstructure is now cleaned. It'll need a little wipe down, panel wiping, and whatnot for paint on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Hopefully, the weather's going to get right. But before that happens, uh, the radar arch needs to be finished. So what should happen, I'm just trying to rotate this around. What should happen is there should be a plate across here. This should be solid, but I want to be able to get wiring up underneath for all the bits and bobs that'll be on top of the arch. And so I'm going to put, put a little standoffs, 25 millimeters out, so that eight millimeters of uh, a white plastic or some description something nice something very like like fiberglass around the world but in plastic and we'll make panels so I've done some measurements and I've actually done a CAD drawing which I'll show you and I'm going to put little standoffs here three on the lower side 
and then 400 mil up and ignore those markings they were original testing ones and the same across the underside of the uh, arch so I think I have that in the shot there so the underside of that will also have them so then if we need we can just take off the panels and get access into the wiring so I'll show you what I'm doing in the workshop the other thing I'm going to be working on is uh, I put this little mark down here and my glasses on I put this little mark down here I move these wires uh, the little X there or asterisk in uh, marker sharpie and that's roughly the, the pivot point of the bottom of the hydraulic ram which connects to this upper part here have I been shot? I do and uh, this I've made some markings here some of this will have to be cut away and I'm going to make a little U bracket out of some fairly heavy 10 mil steel with 16 mil stainless bolts to go through here and catch the end of the ram and allow it to connect to that and then we have our full articulation. I've already tested the rams at their highest and lowest positions. Uh, at the very end of the ram I can have the radar arch fully back. I don't need pressure to push it back any further. <clears throat> and I've got about 14 millimeters of ram left in his travel on the close. So it means that the, I can pressurize it tight and then put in the locking pins. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. So we're back in the workshop and this is the CAD drawing I've done this morning and uh, I'll get something to point. So initially you saw me put in this arch here with the little stencil that made me to cut it and the distance from here to this outside, ignore that, that should be down there. Uh, it's 380 millimeters. I had that already, already uh, figured out. So that's the same on both sides, they're very accurate. This is like uh, the actual drawing and that's showing the actual way in, if you can see it. And uh, so I've just taken a snippet of the actual drawing to, to show you. So what I've done here is you can see if I go in fairly close, you can see the little black circles there are going to be uh, M8 standoffs or uh, threaded connectors that I've gotten from Dublin from a company called RFS Fasteners or bolts and nuts.ie. I've been dealing with them for a while building the router that I built and uh, they're very good, very next day delivery and uh, I'm very happy to deal with these people and they're quite cheap. So uh, the top one here, if you can see there, it's 206 with a 12 mil step in and this is the first one I've made. So here are all the bits and this is one inch or 12, 12 millimeter square bar. So 12 meter plus 20 gives me 32, it gives me 8 millimeters for the plastic to go on the inside, uh, give or take a bit, and that's 40 mil, which is what I have on the inside of the arch, and that gives me plenty of space, and it'll be lovely flush finish, and they'll be buried forevermore. So this is one of the shorter ones, I've already done them. So what I've done is, uh, on all of them, um, here's a different one, a different length, but you can see I've stepped in, with the little line there, 12 millimeters, but then I'm turning the line to the side and I'm centering the actual this piece on the line there, leveling it up, clamping it, and welding it, and that's going to go nowhere. So this will be welded, this one will be welded in here, and then this one is the next bigger size, and that'll end up here. And I'm just going to make these today. I have two sets of them to make, four in each. And the bottom one will have the centre, will have a centre hole as well. And remember the big plate is in here. It's not shown in this drawing. The hinge plate, so that will actually end up getting other ones, but they'll probably just be shorter ones. And the idea, of course, is that once I have the perspex and now I have a drawing, so I can actually find out exactly where the holes are once I put these correctly where they should be on the actual boat part itself then I should have a working drawing to find these holes later on when I am making that plastic so we're gonna so on the inside of the plastic plenty of room there and um, we have a box of those so these are more bits and pieces and then the the, the pivot points for the hydraulics uh, M16 they're chunky uh, and we have those uh, 60 mil. I need them to be 50 something, so I've plenty there in order to get an eye lock closed. 
so I'm happy with those. So we've enough of those to do the top and bottom of them, and we'll have some spares. So we'll figure out what to do with those that came in tens. And these are the standoffs, I call them. But they're so these are all in stainless, so we'll never have a problem. Stainless and stainless will never rust. This will be welded in, primed, painted, fully part of the steel boat, so that's never going to be an issue. Uh, just a couple of tacks top and bottom and uh, that should do us so we'll see how we get on It's done, these two are just still raw hot. Um, they're all done. Along with the first ones. So they're all done now. And I'll tidy them up and give them a little sand. So I've moved on now to the next bit. I'm going to make uh, brackets to hold these into the bottom part of the hinge on the red arch. They're the ramps for them. So this is some rescued uh, 50 by 10 which will be the base which will go under here if that will stay that way so I've just given myself a few millimetres spare to get the pin through those big bolts and these are 6 by 50 and they're going to go on the outside either side and a little bit of wiggle room as a bit there needs to come off but essentially I'll have about three millimeters on the inside as you can see there so just not too much and uh, just to shape these and I have my center holes marked so yet again printed in CAD in one to one resolution so the line here indicates that line there and you can see how absolutely accurate it is so that weld will be left shown and then I'll do a big groove underneath this one and then polish it all up so on we go I'll make these parts there we've tons of movement and weld that into the side of the hinge and then reinforce it underneath so there we go another little bit done 